So on July 5th, a 911 call was placed from a motel in Osceola County, Florida, where a 25-year-old mother of six needed help right away because her six-year-old son drowned while trying to take a drink from the toilet. When police and paramedics arrived at the scene, they found the young boy in the bathroom. They took his head out of the toilet and rushed him to the hospital. The parents of the boy, Bianca Blase and Larry Rhodes Jr., said that their son had a habit of drinking out of the toilet no matter how many times they punished him for it. And today, he must have gotten stuck and drowned. Except, that didn't explain why the boy's eyes were swollen, as well as the numerous bodily injuries comparable to a beating. At the hospital, they discovered the six-year-old also had brain hemorrhaging as well as a lacerated liver, and even though the boy was unconscious and had no discernible pulse, he was placed on life support where the slightest sliver of hope remained that he would pull through. The parents were arrested and charged with child neglect and abuse. And it gets even more heartbreaking, as authorities found five more children in the cramped, disheveled, and filthy motel room, ranging from five years old all the way down to just ten months old, and each one of them showed signs of being abused. Days later, Sheriff Marcos Lopez added murder to the child abuse charges as the little boy in the hospital dies. The reason he wasn't breathing was because his parents got very angry because he was drinking out of the toilet, so they started to beat him. First, the mother beat him. Then the father started repeatedly punching this little boy with a closed fist. He punched him multiple times to the head, to the stomach area, to this little six-year-old child. The little boy unfortunately passed away a few days later. The cause of death was blunt trauma, blunt force trauma to the head and abdomen. We arrested both parents yesterday for murder. And they were arrested that day on the scene for neglect. But yesterday, we charged them both with murder and arrested them on that charge. I have learned also that just a few hours ago, the state attorney's office also has officially charged both parents with murder. An oddity popped into my head when I first read how this child was found. That his head was still in the toilet. So this obesity beast right here claims she found her son with his head in the toilet, drowned, and she just leaves him in there. Going against any maternal instincts such as holding your child, performing CPR, or basically anything in hopes of reviving your son. But how about this scenario, which might be even a little worse. Take your son's head out of the toilet, sees that he's dead, and put his head back in to call the police? So the actual story goes, the child would often drink from the toilet. Police speculate that it was out of sheer necessity because he was thirsty, dehydrated. Well, his parents did not like it because they didn't like being disobeyed. So after catching the child the last time, had taken the beating too far and the child expires. And this beating happened in front of the other children because it was the four and five year old that were able to tell the police what they saw all the way to when their parents placed their brother's head in the toilet. Quick note, the parents have not yet had their day in court so any actions on their part are alleged. So as both parents, who are both far cries from Genius Town, decided to place their son's head into the toilet because they felt that was proof to the police that he had drowned there, not understanding that the human thing to do was to take him out. Almost equivalent to Manling Williams stabbing her husband in the back, the back of the neck, the back of the head, and telling the police her husband had committed suicide as if everybody is a fucking moron, except the fucking morons. So I just hate these two, to the detriment of my own self-perception of being a good person, so I'll just say it like this. I hope that the father, while in jail, doesn't run into a guy named Tiny, who himself was hurt tremendously as a child by his own father, learns what Larry Rhodes Jr. was in for, how he beat his own six-year-old son to death, 
And I really hope Tiny doesn't look into Larry's eyes and mistaken him for his own father and starts beating him to a bloody pulp and placing Larry's head into the toilet and calling the guards to report a man had drowned. I really hope that doesn't happen to Larry. But this mugshot, this mugshot of the mother really rubs me the wrong way. That smirk. Is there anything colder than being the accomplice to killing your own son, then smiling for a photo? Let me just tell you that this lady looks to be extremely overweight. That's just facts. I'm telling you this because all of their six kids were malnourished, described as tiny and frail. So she was literally stuffing her face in front of her kids because as small as that motel room is, you better believe those kids were being tortured with the smell of food. Being the good person as I am, I really hope she doesn't have cardiac arrest while she's in prison. And God forbid she runs into the female tiny who takes her food tray away from her every single day. That would be horrible. You know, our catalog of true crime videos is steadily growing, and the crimes against children, our future, fucks me up the most. But I will leave you on a more positive note as we end this story that the little six-year-old boy's death will not be in vain, because even though he lost his life disobeying his parents, the result was that his five younger siblings were all saved. And all five were not separated and adopted by the same foster home who reports that all of them are doing amazingly well. And when these kids are old enough, they will see how their brave eldest brother had changed their lives forever and for the better. My name is Killian and this is True Crime Stories. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll be back with more. <laughs>